Jason, this issue about uh, you know radiation of brain metastases um, in the in, when when one is initiating systemic therapy, as you say, it's you can't bank on epscopal effect, but you know, brain metastases are, have always been kind of the bane of our existence mm -hmm. in this disease. Right. So just maybe step back from the hope for abscopal effects being um, really commonplace. Um, if you have a patient in front of you, and let's say they're BRAF wild type, just to kind of you know, ma make the decision-making process easier, um, what, what are your kind of rules of thumb in terms of the role of surgery um, as a, as an, who needs surgery as an upfront approach before initiating therapy uh, versus, you know, who would you think about initiating uh, systemic therapy and radiating, perhaps stereotactic, um, who are the patients who'd actually feel comfortable waiting? Um, again, this is the BRAF wild type population where immune therapy is going to be front and center of your option. Well, I think this is an area where we might get some robust discussion. In my practice, um, I would say if the patient has a symptomatic lesion, then I would send them to the OR probably to try to have that lesion removed. Outside of that, we try to be as aggressive as possible with stereotactic mm -hmm. approaches to individual lesions, um, assuming that it's like a number that we can actually do. It doesn't, not like 10 or something. Yeah. But if it's three, if it's something along those lines, we definitely try to get those. Now, the question about should you do that first and then wait, yeah. um, I think that's less clear to me. And I think that that a little bit is dictated by what else is going on. So if the patient otherwise has disease all over their body that's all growing fast, you know, sometimes I feel like we just got to get going. Right. Um, if there's time um, and there's sort of less disease, then I sometimes will do that first just to try to make sure that we're going one step at a time. Sure. It, it doesn't happen uncommonly with patients who are getting radiation that they need steroids for some period of time. And that can sort of interrupt your ability to give immunotherapy. So if the idea is that you're giving concomitant immunotherapy. But again, it goes to the clinical situation. If we have to just get going, then we just get going. But if we can sort of separate it out a little bit. And then the question becomes in these patients, what is the best agent? Because we don't have a lot of great data for pembrolizumab or nivolumab in brain meds. Right. We do have data for ipilimumab suggesting it works slightly less well than in the body. But that actually, I sometimes have slowed down by that to say, which one is actually best for this patient? Yeah. Systemically, I would give PD-1 as frontline therapy. But in a patient with brain, especially like brain-only disease, Right, and then you rated it. What do you want to do then? And that yeah. that that gets a lot more nuanced. And I think we're gonna not gonna know that for a couple of years here. Yeah, I mean, as you're alluding to, that we do have at least some phase two data with ipilimumab showing that there is there is a tail of the curve there for patients who started with asymptomatic non-steroid requiring brain metastases. So at least there there's there is some evidence, and we 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 need that data for the PD-1 antibodies, and ideally a little bit of follow-up time just to get a sense that we can get the same kind of profile mm -hmm. uh, of, of treatment effect. But you know, I agree, we're not there yet. Well, uh, let, let's maybe um, you know wrap up this discussion. Um, but before doing so, um, you know there has been um, some consideration of the idea of using surgery, uh, leave aside the brain metastasis population, Renee, um, a, as a consolidation approach um, for patients who have excellent responses, but maybe you know now now resectable. Uh, so they've got a you know maybe sustained remission, but resectable. Um, we don't have any clinical trial evidence to guide decision, but I'm interested in your thoughts about. Uh, the role of surgery there, um, and then maybe I can tuck in uh, both with immunotherapy and targeted therapy, BRAF inhibitor-based therapy. You have a patient who's had a nice durable remission, um, you know, 20 sites of disease, but is now progressing at a single site. Um, so, so you're, you know, there's something going on there in terms of concern of loss of control, but maybe just at a single site. You know, how enthusiastic do you feel about the idea of surgery as a, a way of clearing that lesion and, and maybe getting on a path towards continued response elsewhere? I think it's a, it's a good idea. And, um, you know, it's been used in other tumors where effective therapies have been out there. Uh, to bring up an old idea, when we didn't have effective therapy, we did that with, with biochemotherapy right. uh, to basically get a maximum response and then resect the residual disease. There are ongoing studies right now looking at both adjuvant immunotherapy, neoadjuvant immunotherapy, and, uh, and targeted agents in patients with big bulky disease that, yeah, the surgeons can go in, but they're probably gonna leave tumor behind. Mm -hmm. and, and it's ultimately the systemic thing that's gonna be a problem. So I think it's good. And you find a number of pathologic responses there, complete pathologic responses, which maybe uh, correlate with, with outcome. We don't know that, but it's their ongoing trials. And I think it's an it's a exciting new field. Yeah, I mean, it's you, you look at the data as, as it emerges uh, pretty clearly with the targeted therapies. Um, hard to know yet with the immune checkpoints uh, still whether complete response, uh, you know, from drug therapy alone 
um, you know, is the most powerful predictor of long-term benefit. Uh, but it raises the question of whether converting a partial response to a complete response with a scalpel uh, is really functionally the same uh, or not. I mean, if, if the patient didn't have such a robust uh, response, um, you know, does that worry worry you about uh, you know microscopic disease elsewhere? Um, you know, I think this is th these are topics we'll you know maybe want to revisit when we think about the systemic therapies, which is where I think we should turn. Um,